Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to Paint to Life episode 34. A quick hello right off the hop to our new subscriber sent over from my friend and fellow terrain and miniature painting enthusiast, Beard Clipper. His channel can be found in the description below. Welcome to Paint to Life. Last week was the conclusion of our Halloween theme month, six delightfully evil episodes culminating with Tybos the Headless Horseman. Now I know you didn't see it because nobody did because I released it on Halloween and no one was watching. So when this is over, go check it out. He'd like some love. Now it's election week in the United States and regardless of who you are, where you live, what you believe, it's been a stressful week for everybody. And the good news is I'm not here to talk about that, but I do have a solution to some of the anxiety you might be feeling. Now is the best time in history to give Dungeons and Dragons a try. I shit you not. And I aim to prove it to you by the end of the episode. So watch till the end and tell me if I did. So tonight will be a first for Paint to Life. By popular demand, I will be painting a regular sized human miniature. This is a Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures male human cleric. And he is not just some rando tiny miniature I picked for my first. He's real, and he has a story to share. He's me. I'm GMA Tank. Let's get painting. All right, so what is a male human cleric? Firstly, male as in XY chromosome. Secondly, human as in 23 pairs of chromosomes. And finally, cleric as in a devout holy follower of a god. All right, all right. Before any members of BAD or my own family start to rise up and protesting my channel here, understand that in the fantasy world of Dungeons and Dragons, there could be many gods, depending on your setting. In Paint to Life, many of our videos take place in the Forgotten Realms, and there are shitloads of gods there. I mean, there are gods for everything. Additionally, these gods aren't just pushed on kids by their parents from birth through scary stories to gain obedience. I mean, these gods in the Forgotten Realms actually show up and walk the earth quite frequently actually in the form of avatars. You see, it's pretty hard to deny the existence of Umberly the Sea God when she literally rises from the depths to swallow you and all of your semen friends. You see, it's pretty hard to deny the existence of Torm, the God of duty, loyalty, and righteousness when he outright appears to assist badly outnumbered and outmatched faithful fighting on despite all odds. So Cleric is my favorite class in Dungeons and Dragons, basically because if you took the exact same person but made him or her a devout of a different god, playing the game would yield an entirely different experience. So what about the god of death? That must be evil as hell, right? Well, funny story that. In the Forgotten Realms, the god of death was once Merkel, and his cowled skull head was visible in nightmares all across Faerun. He was the one deity that all mortals could visually see in their heads when they thought about him. And he was even known to materialize sometimes beside open graves and gaze at mourners just to remind everybody that their time too would come. Pretty much like the Grim Reaper, Scythe and everything. Know me and fear me. My embrace is for all and is patient but sure. The dead can always find you. My hand is everywhere. There is no door I cannot pass nor guardian who can withstand me. Well, during a period known as the Time of Troubles, the deity Merkel was destroyed and replaced by a former human who ascended to godhood. That human's name was Kalimvor Lionsbane. When Kalimvor took over, he realized that to be Lord of the Dead is to be judge over the departed souls. And as such, he wished to clear all the corruptions that were associated with the realms of death brought about by the former Lords of Death. He reshaped the Bone Castle, which was a twisted citadel in the Grey Wastes, and instead replaced it with this topaz, smoky-colored crystal spire, its translucency representing that death should no longer be a frightening mystery. Souls being judged in his domain would no longer find anguish and torture, but nor would they find joy. Death is but a part of life. Fear it not, evade it not, and view it not as evil. To fear death delivers you into the hands of those who can bring death down upon you. Do honor to the dead, for their strivings in life brought Faerun to where it is now. Alright, so what does all this mean? What did I mean earlier when I said he's not just a rando piece of plastic that I picked for my first? He is me. Well, as much as I like to play pretend dungeon master for all of you, well, very good people out there, believe it or not, I have actually played the game of Dungeons and Dragons before myself. Let me tell you the story of Gabriel Knight, cleric of Kelimvor. 
Back in 1999, I was 18, I was playing a campaign in 3rd edition with my girlfriend who also had a character. She was a dragon blood sorceress named Rowan Dundragon, and I was Gabriel Knight, Cleric of Kelimvor. I memorized quotes like these, Do not fear death so much, but rather the inadequate life. Or, Think not disdainfully on death, but look on it with favor, for even death is one of the things nature wills. And I loved playing a character that was not only not afraid of death, but who enjoyed helping others live a worthy life rather than waste it worrying about the inevitable. We played for many sessions and had many great adventures together. And then in January of 2003, when I was just 22 years old, my father passed away suddenly at the age of 52. Now, myself, I'm not a very spiritual person, but I did envy my grandmother who smiled at his open casket and kissed him on the forehead while I was devastated. She had faith that she would see him again one day where I believed that we had known each other in this life and that he was returning as elements to the stars from whence we all came and would all return. Man, religion really makes handling death easier. Then we started playing D&D again, and Gabriel Knight's own teachings helped pick me up out of my depression. As men, we are all equal in the presence of death, and one should die proudly when it is no longer possible to live proudly. I came to terms with the passing of my father using D&D as my catharsis. I basically role-played my own kind of therapy. No matter how I felt about reality, when I played D&D, I grew stronger and more resilient to the sadness that was inside me. <laughs> it was an amazing thing. A year later, Gabriel sacrificed himself for the party. He was unceremoniously eaten by a green dragon after being torn to pieces. It was traumatic for everyone at the table. My girlfriend cried real tears. The role-playing had been so true, it was like losing a part of herself. Except I wasn't sad. I sensed it was the natural order of things, like the conclusion of a journey. It reminded me of my dad, but in a good way. He died as he lived, unafraid. Now fast forward to 2016. I have two kids, I'm married, I have a job, I've moved on, and I have a chance to play again in fifth edition. This would be my first time playing in almost two decades. Well, wouldn't you know it, when brainstorming my new character, I imagine that Rowan had been pregnant with Gabriel's child when he died. Her son, Gavin, followed in his father's footsteps as a member of Kalimvor's church. He's a strong, up-and-coming Kalimvorite, all of his father's seriousness, but with a splash of his mother's curiosity. Eighteen years after I wrote him, I was playing the son of one of my previous characters. I wore a Halloween mask at the table, cut down to the jaw to hide my mouth because death has no emotion. I gave funeral rites to dying monsters. I would use the cantrip Spare the Dying to stabilize enemies who were suffering. Gavin's armor and weapons were adorned with skulls, not to intimidate, but to bring to the forefront that which unites us all. I played as Gavin for four months, and I'm glad to say that he survived. The campaign was handed back to me then as a DM, and of course I regulated him into an NPC role where he will live on forever in my world and my imagination. Of course, it was odd when other players at the table kept trying to sleep with my mom, Rowan Dundragon, just to piss me off, but... With that in mind, I chose to paint Gavin to represent to you a scale figure of a 6 foot 2 human male here on Paint to Life. I realize not everyone here knows just how big some of these creatures are supposed to be without a reference point. Here are some pictures I took of Gavin and some of our old friends and he'll remain here to demonstrate that size differential moving forward. Trust me when I tell you, I know without a doubt, Gavin would stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything from this channel. Gavin Knight, Doom Guide of Kelimvor.
All right, I hope you liked this look back at my experience in Dungeons and Dragons as a player. Here is Gavin for the shelf. I wanted to share this story with you because Dungeons and Dragons has the ability to safely and therapeutically transport you to another time, to another person, to another place. With the right group, you can experiment and experience emotions, feelings, or desires you might never feel comfortable trying in real life. Now, finding the right group is key, but that just requires a little bit of effort on your part. Firstly, looking inside you to see what you're looking to get out of the experience and then get out there and make one. More than half of my current D&D group had never played before a year ago, and I found them online with classifieds and then referrals. With the world the way it is, people are looking for things to do, and things like YouTube communities, streamers like Critical Role, and technology like Roll20 supporting remote play it has never been easier to get started in this hobby than it is right now. I told you earlier, it is the best time to start playing Dungeons and Dragons. D&D is like a round-robin storytelling experience where everyone participates. And of course, nothing is more exciting than finding that perfect miniature for your D&D character, than painting it to life as you see it in your head. Here's my current party that I'm playing with in my D&D group. I painted them myself as a gift to each of them. Now is a great time perhaps to start both your D&D career as well as your miniature painting career. Head on down to your local friendly gaming store, pick up the Dungeons and Dragons starter set, which gets you everything you need to get playing, and grab some brushes, grab some paints and a miniature, and start painting along however you imagine that character to be. Do you have a similar D&D experience you'd like to share? Leave it in the comments below for all of us to enjoy. That's all for tonight. I hope everyone in your family is safe and healthy. I'm GMA Tank. Wash your hands, people. Together we played together. Wow, there's three. Together we played together for many sessions and had many adventures together. Good writing.